We've been talking a little bit about displacement, velocity, acceleration as they relate to one another, um, specifically with, uh, with how the graphs relate to one another. And I've mentioned that they're vectors, so in this video we'll talk a little bit more about what exactly that means. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. A vector is indeed a quantity represented by an arrow um, having both direction and magnitude. That's true. Um, vectors have components in every dimension of space that they inhabit, and I'll explain what that means in just a little bit here. Um, all measurements have magnitude, and by magnitude, that means that they tell us how much um, by a, a number and by a unit, and the unit is there to compare the number two. So for example, uh, as we've said in a previous video, two meters or 0 0.4 meters, the meters is there to tell us um, what we're multiplying the, the uh, coefficient by to give us a sense of how much scale something has. Um, but not all measurements have direction, so let's be a little bit more clear in this video uh, how to deal with those directions mathematically. As it says in this video, the vector can be represented visually or geometrically by actually drawing an arrow on a piece of paper or on a screen or a whiteboard, and the arrow represents the quantity that uh, is being discussed. The size of the arrow relative to other vectors that are drawn on the page or screen or whiteboard um, tells us uh, its relative magnitude compared to those, and then of course the direction that it points has a physical representation telling us the arrow head um, showing us the direction that the uh, vector quantity is pointed in. But to mathematically represent a vector, we have a couple ways that we could do it. One is to list its components uh, or projections along the appropriate axes of the space that it inhabits. So for example, this vector in this slide uh, extends from the origin out to this point, and that means that in x, y, z space, this vector has a, um, a projection or a component, a subscript x. That's how far our pink vector extends in the x direction. And a subscript y is how far it extends in the y direction. And a subscript z is how far it extends in the z direction. So you can describe this vector mathematically. You would write it as a, which is written here in bold specifically to emphasize that this is a vector quantity, a equals ax, comma, ay, comma, az. This is exactly um, how you would write something as an ordered triplet or, or ordered pair, a little bit more familiar in, um, in two-dimensional graphing. Because that's what the vector represents is a, uh, a quantity extending from the origin in the direction to that ordered pair, or in this case, ordered triplet. And then how far away it is, is um, given by the, uh, the, the scale or magnitude of the, um, the numbers involved in the ordered pair or ordered triplet. A vector can also be represented mathematically by a single magnitude that tells you just the um, scale of the vector itself in, uh, in one single digit and units, and then we would have to represent the direction um, by angles. So for example, a theta and a phi are drawn on this image here to show you uh, how many degrees the vector uh, is counterclockwise from the positive x-axis and then uh, up from the xy plane toward the z-axis. And if you are doing a vector in, in especially in two-dimensional uh, graphing, drawing a vector or reporting a vector, one of the most clear things you can do is specifically um, label a angle and then report how big that angle is. If you don't specifically label an angle in a drawing, then uh, it might not be clear which angle you think is the number of degrees that you are reporting. <clears throat> a couple of points about vectors. The meaning of a vector quantity is independent of the location of the vector. And what I mean by that is, uh, for example, if I say 2.0 meters straight up, the 2.0 is a number, the meters is a unit, the straight up is a direction, so that's a vector quantity. And it means the exact same thing in different locations. Two meters straight up is a, uh, a concept that has the same meaning as it says here. 
at the Student Success Center at James Madison University as it would at my house or at the bottom of the sea. Of course, how true that is depends on the reference frame to some extent. For example, um, two meters straight up uh, at the North Pole versus at the South Pole would have the same meaning to a person standing on the North Pole or standing on the South Pole, uh, but would have a, a different um, visual appearance to someone who's watching that uh, from, say, off planet with a really strong telescope. So this idea that the reference frame has to be clearly defined is something that I don't think will trip us up in this course, um, but of course it is an important part of understanding how a vector is defined. So it is to our advantage every time at the beginning of a problem to define our reference frame. Conveniently for us, there is sort of a uh, understood um, x and y and z axis directions that if we don't define them otherwise, we can say on, on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard or a screen that positive x is to the right, negative x is to the left. Positive y is up and negative y is down. And we won't actually spend a lot of time talking about um, z into and out of the page in this, uh, in this course. So I want to make sure that we're clear about the terminology with displacement and uh, and distance, and I'm I'm going to try to use the um, the capital D as the uh, displacement vector only because that's what OpenStax uses, and especially if we're talking about in one dimension, um, we might find that it's more useful to say things like delta x for the displacement just in the x direction. Um, but if we're talking about displacement in two dimensions or three dimensions, then we need to have a different variable besides delta x, which represents only in the x direction. So I'll, I'll try to use d. Um, and if you see something else being used, then uh, just be aware that that sometimes happens. As it says here, the displacement uh, that an object has is the straight line change in position. The difference between where the object is now and where the object was at an earlier time. And the distance is the total length of the path traveled between those two positions. A displacement can be negative um, because it's being measured relative to a coordinate axis, and a distance cannot be negative. A distance and a displacement could be the exact same value if an object moved in a straight line in a positive direction. But if there's any deviation from that straight line path, then uh, the distance will be a, uh, a different and larger value than the displacement. So for example, in this image from OpenStax, uh, you can see that the displacement for three different people who took three different dotted line paths from their campsite to a, um, a I believe the book refers to this as a fishing pond. <laughs> so these three different paths, people might have walked different distances, um, and then the straight line displacement is the same for all three. It's just where are they now compared to where they were earlier. So that's the conceptual difference between distance and displacement. When we're being uh, asked to calculate a displacement, an example of, of how we would do that and how we would report the answer is something like this. There's a pedestrian walking in a two-dimensional path between two points in a city. We can see their starting point on the screen and then we can see their destination. And it says here, uh, all blocks are squares 100 meters long on each side and we can see that this person walks nine blocks this way, so 900 meters to the east, and then um, five blocks this way, 500 meters to the north. What is the displacement of the pedestrian when they reach their destination? Now, the wording of this question is uh, allowing me to answer this as, um, as I said, I could give the components. I could say that this person's displacement is 900 meters x hat, uh, 500 meters plus 500 meters y hat. And since the x is defined as this direction right on the page here and the y is defined as this direction that would be a valid answer but another way to report this would be to say the straight line distance from the starting point to the destination is going to be the magnitude of displacement if they specifically asked us for the magnitude of displacement we would have to find that value and couldn't just report this as components so let's go ahead and, and um, be clear about how we would do that X and Y are by definition perpendicular to one another, so by definition an X component and a Y component will um, create a hypotenuse as their uh, final displacement vector. So we could find this displacement value, uh, the, the magnitude of that displacement value with the Pythagorean theorem. And when I do that I would also need to find an angle down here. I would specify this as my angle that I'm finding, this one between the uh, 
magnitude of the displacement vector, that displacement vector right there, and the, um, which by the way, we, we refer to as a resultant. That's what we get when you um, add two vectors together. We've added a displacement in the eastward direction to an, a displacement in the northward direction. So this angle here between the x-axis and the resultant, I would find with, uh, with trigonometry. And so the two, the two interchangeable ways to report the uh, value of displacement here is to say the pedestrian went uh, 1,030 meters at an angle 26.6 degrees north of east, or the pedestrian is displaced um, 900 meters x hat plus 600 meters y hat. And either of those answers is perfectly fine based on the wording of this question. There are times where you'll be specifically asked to do it one way or the other. I want to point out that when we're adding these two vectors, I'm saying first you go 900 meters, and then from the end of the 900 meter displacement, you go another 500 meters in a different direction. And so there's this sequence of first this, then that. That's not always how vectors are added. For example, you could have two simultaneous displacements um, due to simultaneous velocities. For example, this rowboat, uh, let's say that this person is able to row their boat this way in a, what we are uh, shown on the image as a y direction, but simultaneously the river is pushing them this way. What the page is showing us is an x direction. So if the river speed is 4 meters per second, that means they would travel downstream 4 meters per second, uh, whether they're rowing or not, but they are pointing themselves directly across the stream and rowing at 3 meters per second. Simultaneously, each second, they are going 4 meters downstream, but 3 meters across the stream. So their final velocity is going to be found as though these were, the mathematics of it is the same as though these were uh, sequential, as each second you went 3 meters and then 4 meters. That's not what's happening, but mathematically it's the same. This idea that sometimes vector addition is for simultaneous vectors, and sometimes vector addition is for sequential vectors, is uh, an interesting little nuance that sometimes can trip students up. So I'd like to make sure that you're aware of the fact that if two vectors are happening simultaneously to an object, um, which is going to be true for pretty much any vectors except displacement, um, then the way we add them together is the same as the way we add displacement vectors, even though conceptually what's happening is a little bit different. So our total velocity for this boat would be 5 meters per second by the Pythagorean theorem. And of course, I would then go in and find uh, the angle. And they defined this as the angle that I'm going to find, not the one over here inside the triangle. So I would do an inverse tangent of 3 meters per second over 4 meters per second and get that angle to be 36.9 degrees. So that was um, a little bit of an introduction to a definition of vectors and how we represent them. And in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about some of the math that we'll do with vectors besides adding.